Hello, in this short video I would like to show you how to receive reflected signals of shortwave stations reflected by jets as well as meteorites. Because these reflecting objects are moving, the reflected frequency has a frequency shift due to the Doppler shift. All you need for reception is an SSB receiver and a steady carrier signal which is in the dead zone. This is the dead zone around the transmitter of Deutscher Wetterdienst near Hamburg around 14 MHz. The shape of the dead zone depends largely on the frequency and on the time of reception. The dead zone occurs from the refraction of the signal in the ionosphere and the dead zone is especially big between the transmitter and the first touchdown of the signal. But luckily enough not only the ionosphere can work as a reflective medium. Uh, the signals can be also reflected and scattered by jets as well as meteorite trails. They work as a secondary antenna and as a second source of the signal. In this spectrum view you can see the two distinctive peaks, one from the transmitter itself and the other from the reflected signal from a jet. Because the jet is moving due to the Doppler effect also the reflected frequency moves and this can be seen best at the waterfall diagram. Generally speaking the shape of the Doppler trace shows the motion of the jet relative to the transmitter and my receiving antenna. The higher the relative velocity of the jet, the higher is the Doppler shift. Is the Doppler frequency higher than uh, the basic frequency, then this shows that the jet is moving relatively towards me. The higher the frequency and the higher the relative velocity of the jet, the higher is the Doppler shift. A relative velocity of the jet of 1000 km per hour will cause a Doppler shift of maximum 50 Hz at 30 MHz, a maximum of 25 Hz at 15 MHz and a maximum of 5 Hz at 3 MHz. This is only the case when the jet flies exactly on a line between transmitter and receiver. In normal cases the Doppler shift is uh, half as high as the highest theoretical values. For showing meteorites we have to switch to another software which delivers a better resolution. On the lower side you see the original Perseus waterfall and on the upper side you see uh, the same picture uh, with uh, SB Spectrum by Martinez G3 PLX. SB Spectrum delivers a sharper image regarding time and frequency. This is valid also for the jets as well as the short living reflections of the meteorite trails. As we see a meteorite we see a short trace of light and this is an ionized channel which will reflect uh, radio waves. Winds in this altitude of about 80 to 100 kilometers are as high as 400 to 600 kilometers per hour and this uh, velocity will cause uh, the Doppler effect. For a better view we switch over to Radio Prague on 21745 kHz with a transmission to South Asia in the morning and here you see the antenna diagram of the rhombic antenna which leaves a bit 
backscatter and we will use the backscatter. In Hanover we are in the dead zone regarding the audio of Radio Prague but thanks to the small bandwidth of the receiver we can manage to find at least a beat tone of the carrier. This carrier will be enhanced by meteorite trails. If we switch over to SP Spectrum, we can see the traces of these meteorite trails. The shape and the length of the Doppler trace reflects this wind speed uh, in the upper atmosphere as well as the intensity of ionization. Um, this is of course related to the size of the meteorite. Well, there are even more things between heaven and earth, like this Doppler shift from a jet on medium wave from the Urumqi transmitter, or even to show the movement of the ionosphere itself or uh, of the different spate of uh, its different layers. It's up to you for additional experiments.